water is essential to life everywhere you go, but in Death Valley, it's extremely important. Death Valley has some of the driest landscapes on the planet. We've had years without recordable rain. And so the reliability of these springs and access to water is what allows life to exist here at all. There's a thousand springs in Death Valley, which is really remarkable, and some of which are really productive, like the Stenninger Spring here that feeds Scotty's uh, Castle in Grapevine Canyon. This is an amazing place, and it's the reliability of that water on an annual basis that allows life to exist here as we know it. And this part of the park was really hit hard by the flood of October 2015. And we've had destruction mostly to our infrastructure and the things that we prioritize and value today. But the natural world is very resilient. And as you can see, as we move down the channel here where the water's expressing, when you just add water, there's life. Uh, and we'll, we'll see some of that. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but on the pipe right here, there's footprints that are walking up and down the trail. They're bobcat footprints. This is really impressive. Two years ago, this was just dirt and gravel. And as you can see, the life is coming out of it. We've got cattails and new willows starting and water seeping. I'm sure we've got frogs and drams damselflies, dragonflies in here. Diving beetles in the water that are endemic to this area. They don't occur anywhere else. Oh, frog. Little tiny Pacific uh, tree frogs. They're about the size of a quarter. They're all over this place. We've got bees and wasps. Grapevine Canyon has a home to at least 240 birds that we're aware of that have been documented here. It's one of the highest uh, diversity birding spots in, in the whole of the Mojave Desert. It's truly an amazing area. So we're in the spring house. This is the main source of water for Scotties. This has been the spring collection gallery that was put in by Johnson early on. Uh, it's also actually called Steniger Spring. The building that you see around it is a temporary building that we put in because the original building was, was uh, damaged beyond repair in the flood. Uh, but this is the main spring source, flows about 200 gallons a minute. And it's what gives life to Scotty's Castle is this spring source. When they built it, they had ceramic clay tie blocks, people call them, and you can see that the, they're turned on their side and the water penetrates through these ceramic blocks. The side here was damaged in the flood and blew out the historic collection system, if you will, and has to be, that's one of our projects, is to rebuild that historically and get all the mud out and clean it up. Scotty's needed to be closed to result of the flood. We had no fire suppression system, life safety issues. We had no potable water. We had no wastewater system. And we had no HVAC, no climate control systems. And therefore, it was, it was just absolutely unable to continue tours and, and the operation as it was previous to the flood. The goal of this project is to bring back this iconic cultural resource to Death Valley, uh, to, to what it was pre-flood and beyond if we can. We want to make this uh, the jewel of the northern end of the park. We want to use it as a jumping off point for people to really learn about Death Valley, to be able to explore the biological, cultural, and natural histories that we have here. It's easy access to Ubihibi Crater from here. It's on a major route for people traveling uh, out of Death Valley to the north through Tonopah. With the consistent reliability of water over eons, it's an easy story to tell. Life finds a way when there's water. 
This is a remarkable spot to capture people's attention and hopefully keep their interest in, in Death Valley and the Park Service in general.